Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is definitely the head of this church. Amen. Amen. And why do I say that? You know, the Bible t tells us that with two or three are gathered, God is in the midst. Amen. Amen. And it's more than two or three people here today. So obviously God, obviously we all have to have some kind of relationship with God to lead us into the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. And because of that, because God is the head of our lives, God has to be the head of the church. Amen. Amen. So we certainly thank God for all that God does in the lives of all of his people. There was a time where I thought or I was led to believe that God only blessed those who acknowledge him. Amen. He only blessed Christians, but I've learned that God blesses all his people. We all are his people. Rather, we profess uh, salvation or not, God blesses his creation. Amen. Amen. So, so wonderful to know that. Because religion teaches us that if we confess and we believe and we become a, a part of, and then we, what they call sin, or what they call, or what we call backslide. Religion teaches us that God would turn his back on us, amen? But God doesn't. He does not. God never, ever, ever turns us loose. So don't ever think that God will leave or forsake any of you, amen? Amen. amen. Let us go to our call to worship. Well, first of all, we greet, uh, let us uh, give everyone a, a, a greeting, a hand wave of, of, of a greeting. Don't forget about those who are tuning in this morning. We thank you for tuning in with us this morning. And my prayer is that something will be said, heard, or seen that will be life-changing. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's go to our call to worship. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us come before him with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done great things. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the great things God has done. Now let us pause for our morning prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for leading, guiding, and keeping us. We thank you, God, for just watching over us each and every day. We thank you, God for your love, your kindness, your mercy, your grace. We just thank you for your totality, all that you are. And God, we know today that we would not be sitting in this building this morning if you had not watched over us last night. Now, some may believe that they got up on their own, but I believe that all of us who are sitting in this building this morning or who are listening through YouTube this morning. I believe by faith that all of us, we acknowledge you, God, for watching over us, for keeping us, for protecting us. We acknowledge you, God, for waking us up yet another day. And our faith, God, leads us to believe that because you woke us up this day, you're gonna bless us, God, in some kind of a way. Now, Lord, blessings may not come the way we want it to come, we may not understand, God, your blessings when you bless us, but we believe by faith that you are always blessing your people. God, you give us health. You give us strength. God, you allow us to breathe. God, you created this world, God, that we might breathe without any kind of uh, apparatus, without any kind of assistance, God. You created everything perfect just for us. And because you did that, God, we have to believe individually God that all is well wherever we are in our lives whatever is going on in our lives God we believe that you God your presence is always there that you God have promised us that you would never ever leave us nor would you forsake us so those times God when we don't see you those times when we can't feel you those times when when we just feel that life is over our faith, God, our faith, God, ensures us that you are right there with us, God. You are the one leading and guiding us. You are the one that are working things out on our, on our behalf. 
So God, let us praise you this day. Oh God, let us praise you, God, from the depths of our hearts on this day. And God, let us always, as best as possible, be optimistic in any and everything that goes on in our lives. So God, we just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. At this time, we have announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Good morning. Sunday. We're glad to see everyone uh, here this morning. As always, we want to start by acknowledging uh, any visitors we may have in the house. I do see uh, one visitor is a friend of Reverend Burgess. Uh, Raise your hand. You don't have to say anything. We just want to acknowledge your presence here. Well, thank you, sir. Any other visitors that I may have missed? Well, in case there are any out uh, in telework, uh, YouTube land, I think you're thinking of work, telework. <laughs> but uh, we want to welcome you as well as any of those that have uh, joined us online. And we hope uh, we do or say something that will be a blessing to you and, and encourage you to, to come back again. So thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. And hopefully uh, everyone enjoyed uh, Founders Day last Sunday, so that was a wonderful event. Just want to extend the thanks to Ms. Carter and her crew uh, and all those that participated uh, and made it uh, a successful uh, event. I guess Reverend uh, Jeff is always, uh, he, he mentioned that uh, people remember the, the glory of the latter days and uh, he just won't, told us to just be encouraged because there are future is going to be even brighter. So we thank you for, uh, for helping us uh, start down that, that journey. Don't have a lot of announcements this morning, but we do want to encourage you to continue to um, pray for and be a blessing to those on the sick and shut-in list. We did hear um, a note from um, Reggie Harris. So we know he's going through some, uh, some issues uh, just recently, and uh, he's starting, a, I guess, recovery procedures or um, a chemo, I guess, starting Monday. So we want you to keep him and his family in prayer. Uh, uh, right now, it's probably uh, the most we can do is just pray for him, and pray for him and his family. Uh, and as we get additional information, uh, our contact information, we'll uh, be able to pass that on to you. But I believe he's staying with his uh, son right now, and we'll have to get that information, and so you can be able to reach out to him, uh, send him a card, or or, or make a call where, where appropriate. But uh, just be mindful of uh, the. Uh, Difficulties that he's facing right now, and uh, and we don't want to be a burden. We want to help uh, help bless him and help him in his recovery. So uh, just be uh, be mindful of that you guys always do a great job of that. I just want you uh, to encourage you to keep up uh, the good work. Only other announcement I had, uh, believe it or not, this is Operation Blessing Share is kicking off uh, the Angel Tree. So we're starting our Christmas uh, ministry. <coughs> It will run from November 13th through December 4th, and I believe the angel tree is already out in the hallway. So, so uh, it says as uh, they want to uh, bless or, or create Christmas, Christmas wishes or to be granted for children in need. There are several ways you can participate. Uh, you can select items that are on the angel tree at the, at the church in the hallway, return the purchased gifts with tags, to the uh, gift boxes that will be located in Unity Hall, and they'll be available uh, during regular office hours and also on Sunday. But if you want to avoid holiday shopping, you can always uh, have online orders shipped directly to the church office. Just indicate your name as the uh, recipient in the address and address it to uh, 814 Bedrock Lane, or address it to 814 Bedrock Lane in Richmond. And this is for Mr. Audrea, I mean, Adrena Crosland uh, to receive and, and process. So if you want to, uh, also if you want to grant a Christmas wish but don't want to shop, you can uh, basically give donations to our Operation Blessing Share members, and they will do that for you in the, in, in and select uh, which items off the tree that need to be uh, purchased. So we hope that you are going to take opp this opportunity to be a blessing and make a child smile for Christmas. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to any of those on the Operation Blessing Share team. 
And those members are um, Ms. Uh, Adrena Croslin, Adrian Croslin, sorry, Teresa Avens, Gail Jordan, Larissa Reed, Lavinia Reed, and Ms. Mary uh, Williams. So if you have any questions, you can please uh, just contact them and they can give you any additional details. But, and that's all I had for uh, announcements this morning. Do we have any anniversaries to, to celebrate? Any anniversaries? How about birthdays from last Wednesday to, uh, to this uh, Thursday? I've got quite a few names on our list here. I think that's from like the 9th through uh, the 17th. So I've got Ms. Uh, Kim Harvey. Kim Harvey, yep, I think we got you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Dr. Howard Jones' birthday is the 10th. Uh, Charles Boaz's birthday is on the 12th. And Reggie, we just talked about him earlier. His birthday is actually uh, the 13th today. So. Ms. Shirley uh, Baycoat's uh, birthday is the 16th. Brenda Flack is on the uh, 16th as well. So, by, we have any others that want yes. to? Uh, uh, yes, our son Najwa is um, tomorrow. He'll be 31. 31. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> any, uh, well, if we don't have any others, let's join as we sing Happy Birthday to our loved ones. certainly extend um, congratulations to um, those who are celebrating their anniversary and um, a happy birthday again to all of you who are um, having a birthday. I don't have any um, comments in place of um, our pastor this morning, um, but let me tell you a quick story. My brother over there, his name is um, Melvin Woods. Now, this morning, I, I, I acknowledged him as my friend and my brother. But a few years ago, we ended up at FedEx Stadium, and I was sitting among my people, my Redskins people. <laughs> and he came walking through the bleachers with a Dallas Cowboy ball cap on. Oh, I did not acknowledge that brother that day. <laughs> and we laughed about it, and we laughed about it. But I looked at him, and I put my head down. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, God has really, God has really blessed me, um, not so much financially, but he has blessed me richly um, to, to know a whole lot of people. And the blessed part about that is they're not just people, but they're good people. And you talking about having a whole lot of shoulders to lean on, there are countless shoulders that I have to lean on. God has blessed me with brothers, he has blessed me with father figures, he has blessed me with uncles, um, nephews, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And this morning we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the revelation of God, how God works behind the scene. And, and when I think about my life and I look at um, where I'm at today, I choose to believe that God has always been working behind the scene on my behalf, and I know that I'm not the only one that God loves. I know that God loves everyone, all of us. And I know God is truly working behind the scenes, but the thing that I discovered this week um, in, in studying and preparing this message is that it takes faith to believe that. Yes. It takes courage to believe that. Because when we share certain stories with certain people, they may look at us as if we're crazy. They may say, that's just fate. Oh, you went to college, you had no other choice but to be successful. You have a law degree. You have a doctorate degree. But guess what? I had to have had the, um, the, uh, something inside of me to, to, to retain the information and the knowledge that I learned. It wasn't anything that I, I did. Obviously, God had blessed me and was working behind the scene when I was in my mother's womb, if that's the way, if, if that's, if that's the way that God has blessed me. So, so, so the thing about it is that we have to believe this thing. We have to believe it. We have to believe it. And it takes courage. It really does. Amen. But let us prepare for our offering. 
And here at Working Through Church and Life Center, we know we have one offering, one offering only. Nobody pumps and primes anybody to give anything. Last week when I was sitting in here, I never really paid any attention to the, to the envelope itself, but I see that um, on one particular slot on the envelope is that uh, uh, a Founders Day, right? So last week I was sitting in here and um, someone mentioned, um, I don't know if it was um, Reverend Jones or, or um, Deacon Lambert, but they mentioned something about remember it's Founders Day and we give a special offer, right? I had never paid any attention. I was like, goodness gracious, as long as I've been here. I said, I forget every year. And then I'm thinking to myself, I said, well, I wish somebody would remind us every, every week, right? But we're reminded every week because it's on the envelope. But the thing about it is that I've never heard any backlash about not giving anything extra. That's the pride, that's the pride that I have in World Victory Church and Life Center. We respect one another. We, 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 we love God, and we try to love everyone as best as we can. And that is a blessing. This is a blessed place to be. Amen. Amen. That's, my, that's my faith. This, this is what I believe. This is a blessed place to be. Because I've been in other places where they'd have been made a spectacle of you. Oh, yeah, they'd have called you out. They probably would have called your name. You know, so. But let us bless the offering. And after that, we'll have another selection. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for all you've done for us. As Reverend Burgess said, you have touched our lives, helped us, and blessed us in more ways than we can acknowledge. And we may not even be aware of all the things you've done for us. But we are truly grateful, Lord, and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. And now we return just a small portion of those blessings to you and ask that you multiply them and direct us as we use them to do your will. These things we ask in our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Reverend Craig reminded us this morning that God is working behind the scenes all the time. So we already know that it's always, always all about him.
This morning we're going to be reading from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. That's Esther, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. When I was reading this, this, uh, this, chap this book here, the book of Esther, you talking about some rough names? No. <laughs> I'm talking about some rough names. But thank God for, um, for technology. Amen. I learned how to pronounce some of these. That's chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. When, when Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went through the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Today we're going to talk from the, from the subject of God is present and active behind the scenes. So lately, my testimony has been, I am going to practice thinking and believing that everything that happens in my life is good because I trust in God. I'm going to practice thinking and believing that everything that happens in my life is good because of my trust in God. And the good thing about practicing is that you don't always get it right. But as long as I continue to practice each and every day, I get a little better and a little better and a little better at trusting God. It's all about Jesus. It's not about me. Amen. So in my life, I've decided that I'm going to try to think and to believe that everything that happens in my life is good because I trust in God. So I believe the God I serve only want what is best for me such as a parent. They only want what's best for the child, a good parent. So there, go, there would be times when that parent make decisions that's not popular. There would be times when that parent would have to discipline that child. And being a child, the child may not understand, but the parent understands that he, that he or she only want what's best for that child. So I believe the God I serve only want what is best for me. Therefore, when things do not go my way or when my prayers are not answered, I want to believe God regardless. I want to thank God regardless of the pain or disappointments. 
This is a vow that I have made to myself. I choose to put my fate in the hands of God and not in my hands. I messed my life up a long time ago. And I came to the understanding and the conclusion that I did not know what was best for me. My faith. I remember when I got saved, I was stationed in Maine and, and, and there was, I was stationed at the commissary and there was this lady that worked at the commissary and you know, good Christians would make it known that they're good Christians, amen? So everybody knew that she was a good Christian. So when I got saved, I went back and we had a conversation and I told her, I said, I said, I cannot make a decision for myself anymore. I don't know what to do. She looked at me as if I was crazy, but I had put my life in God's hands. I removed my hands completely. So I chose to believe that God is present and active in my life behind the scenes. And in order for me to believe this, God had to have revealed himself to me at one time or another. The only way I can believe that God is good, I have had, I have had to experience God's goodness. Amen? Other than that, I would not know that God is good. You could tell me God is good all the time, but if I never experienced the goodness of God, there is no way I could um, receive that. As a matter of fact, I would stand bold in front of anyone and declare that God has revealed himself to me in more ways than one. And because God has revealed himself to me, I know for a fact that God has revealed himself to each and every one of you at one time or another. I know that. I know that because I believe in God. I trust God. I know that. I know that. So example, how God has revealed himself to me more than once, two examples. The first I've shared before, um, how I got my barbershop. Well, I can go all the way back to the seventh or eighth grade when I started cutting hair. God blessed me with that talent and that skill. I saw my cousin one day uh, cutting his hair and I never had the confidence that I could do anything that I wanted to do, but that particular day, I said to myself, if he can do it, I can do it. And I started cutting hair. Graduated from high school, joined the National Guard. Wanted to go, to, uh, I planned on going to college, but I did not want to go, I wanted to go into the military. So I tried to go um, active duty into the Army once I graduated from um, basic training. But there was a delay. A Navy recruiter called me, all out of the blue. I said, shoot, I'll go to the Navy. I didn't know anything about the Navy. And um, I thought the Navy was full of guys like that, right? But I found, I found out differently. So, and listening to the Navy, found out that they had a job being a ship's barber. Um, I just wanted to party and have a good time. So I said, I can cut hair, um, party all night long. I can cut hair, it, you're not getting paid. So if I mess somebody's head up because I can't see clearly, it wasn't it, not a big deal, <laughs> amen? So I did that though. So then um, I wanted to get out of the Navy. I started cutting hair and I worked at this um, barbershop and one of my clients, um, um, I, I got this client, very well off a, a businessman. For some reason he liked me and he was my client. And, 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 and one day um, the guy that I worked for here in Newport News, he opened up a shop in Williamsburg and he asked me to go there without thinking, sure, I'll go. And, and that, that provided an a, a atmosphere so that my client and I could talk freely because there were five other barbers in the shop that I worked in. And, and I had already asked God to bless me with my own business, you know, by the time I would have retired from the Navy, which, been, which would have been um, uh, 2007. So this client of mine, he said, Craig, whenever you get ready to get your business, let me know, I'll help you out. I ain't have any money, I ain't have good credit. I couldn't go to the bank. Long story short, this guy ended up blessing me with enough money to start my own business. And I didn't have to look for the building. Somebody else found the building for me. God has proven to me that God works behind the scene. When we don't even realize what's going on, God is working behind the scene. And then in 2005, my dad passed away. I, ca I, went, I came home for a family reunion. So from that Saturday until the following Saturday, I was home and, and I didn't go by my daddy's house to see him that particular time. Normally I would go by and see him. 
Well, that particular Saturday, at a particular time, I decided to go outside my mother's house and wash my car. Sure enough, my daddy came riding by. He stopped, we talked for a little bit. He went on his way. That Sunday, I came back to Virginia. And that Monday, my mother called me, told me my daddy was in the hospital. And that, that following Saturday, my daddy died from a stroke. Had not God worked behind the scene and, 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 uh, and, and, and placed me right outside of the house at that particular time and my daddy rode by, I would not have seen him. God works behind the scene. So because I've experienced the revelation of God, I am convinced God is present and active in my life behind the scenes and in your lives behind the scenes as well. I'm quite sure if you, if you pause right now and, 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 and took a moment to think, there are so many stories that you, can, that you can share with us of the blessings of God and how God worked things out, how God went behind the scene and made sure A, B, C, and D was done when we didn't even realize what was going on. So one might ask, well, how can I defend my stance of God revealing himself to me when I cannot see God? How can I defend that? So scripture is filled with accounts of the revelation of God breaking into human life as a surprising gift and an unsettling commission. Not only does it surprise us, not only does it work behind the scene, but when we come to the revelation of God, there is a commission. There is something to do. So Moses hears the voice of God from a burning bush instructing him to lead the people to Israel out of bondage in Egypt. David becomes aware of the sin he has committed when Nathan tells him the story of a rich man who robs and kills a poor man's only lamb. And Peter has a dream that teaches him that God shows no partiality and intends on the gospel message to be preached to Gentiles as well as Jews. God works behind the scenes. God is actively involved in the lives of his people in the lives of his people, all of humanity. See, revelation is the discovery of the character and purpose of God and when it is received. It profoundly changes the lives of its recipients. A friend of mine sat Friday, came to the barber shop. He said, man, God, man, God is really um, showing me something. He said, man, um, last night I had a dream about this guy that works for me in the shipyard. And he said, in the dream, he had, he had his head on my shoulder crying. And I didn't know what was going on. So he said, Friday, he went to work, and he asked the guy, hey, hey man, is anything okay? You okay? You this and that? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. But then he disclosed to him that, that he had been crying on the shoulder of a good friend of his. Revelation changes how you see God. And this guy, he was like, wow, man, God is something. God is this and God is that. So the revelation of God is not just one more item of information in our store of knowledge, not just one of the many things we know or think we know. When God is revealed, everything is seen in a new light. See, revelation is not something that confirms what we already know. Basically, it has to do with knowledge of God and ourselves that is utterly surprising and disturbing. It is an event that shakes us to the core. Although it comes as a gift, offering us a glimpse of the very heart of mystery, it is resisted because it is so threatening and frightening. Another friend, he's having some issues and some problems. He feels as if God is distant from him. He, he, he says sometimes, he says sometimes I just don't care. I don't care if I live or if I die. He said, Craig, the thing about it is that God has already revealed to me what I need to do. He said, but I'm, I'm in the way. I'm my, I'm my worst enemy. He said, I don't want to change. I don't want to do those things. He said, but he said, God has already revealed to me the very heart of mystery. And it is resisted because it is so threatening and frightening. Change is hard. That was one of the, uh, giving my life to Christ was one of the hardest things I had to do because I didn't think about all of the blessings, which I did not know at the time. All I could think about was everything that I was going to give up. And I've testified before, and I do have a, a sense of humor. Amen. <laughs> and, and I can testify, I was in the Navy and the Lord came to me 
and I resisted the Lord. Three significant things happened. And after that third event, I surrender. But I remember, I used to love to, I used to, love to, uh, to party, right? And there was this one song that, that, that the DJ would play. That was The Roof Is On Fire. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and I can only tell you about five or six words. Let it burn. We all know burn, burn. And I say, Lord, I got to give that up. I wasn't ready to give that up. I was not ready to give it up. See, the knowledge it conveys is a dreadful life-given knowledge, but it also demands a kind of death because it turns upside down the lives of people who received it. My life is different now. My life is different. I thought it was going to be bad, but it's good. My life is great. My life is awesome. I went to vote the other day, at, um, and when I went into um, the place where I go to vote, everybody in there knew me. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Hey, Craig, this and that. If God had not revealed himself to me, had I not accepted Jesus Christ as my savior, I would not be the person that I am today. I wonder how many people would have been glad to see me walk through that door. It turns upside down the lives of people who receive it. Revelation compels meaningful decisions about who God is and how we are to understand the world and ourselves. As God reveals himself to us, we look at God in a different way. At one time, you know, we might have looked at God as being a God that hates sin, right? A God that would strike you down if you, if you did this or if you did that. A God that would, that, that, that would turn his back on you if, you if you were disobedient to him. But as he reveals himself, as he shows us his love, his concern, as he works through uh, behind the scenes and, and, and unfold the work that he has been doing, it allows us to see God in a whole different way. See, as followers of Christ, there will be times when we struggle to make sense of things. There will be times when we make decisions that will cause us to question ourselves. Why did I let this person walk over me? Why did I give this person money when I knew they weren't going to pay me back? Why did I give that, that what, what we call, I say that, why did, why did I give that homeless guy my money when I knew he was going to go buy some alcohol. That's the revelation of God. It makes us do things. It makes us see things differently. It makes us different people. When we come to the belief that God is present and active behind the scenes in our lives, there will be a significant change in how we think and how we act. Our outlook on life and this world will change significantly. The life of Christ will begin to make sense to us. He died for us. He died for the lost. He died for those who, who, who were hungry. He sacrificed his life so that we would have life. He did not pick and choose. Christ died for all of humanity. But those of us who have not yet have experienced a true revelation of God, we condemn people. We convict people. A homosexual has no business in the church. A homosexual has no business teaching or preaching about God. Who are we? Maybe, maybe if, we, if we open our eyes and, and we allow ourselves to see God and in, 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 in not in his totality, but as far as the totality of, of, of our understanding, maybe we can see that. Maybe we can understand. Anybody that's hurt or hurt him, come. That's what he said. He said, come. Amen. See, our outlook on life and this world will change significantly. The life of Christ will begin to make sense. We will eventually come to the conclusion that the life we live no longer belongs to us. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Our life belongs to the service of the Lord, not to the policemen of the Lord, but to the service of the Lord, not to, uh, to body, not, not to protect the Lord as a bodyguard, but to serve the Lord, to do the Lord's will, to
to carry out, to continue the work of Christ. So the book of Esther has differently, the, 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 the book of Esther had difficulty gaining canonical status in both the Jewish and the Christian traditions, mainly because it lacks religious elements. There are no prayers or sacrifices, no mention of Jerusalem or the temple. Neither Esther nor Mordecai seems to follow or even acknowledge Jewish law. But most strikingly and strangely for an Old Testament document, God is never mentioned in the book of Esther. However, the book does contain an underlying theology of God's presence. God, though unseen and unacknowledged, works through human instruments to ensure the survival of his people, the oppressed the hunger, the homosexual, the bank robber, the thief, the backbiter, the perfect Christian. He works through human instruments to ensure the survival of all of us, amen. Human action is the key to achieving God's purpose in the world. So the primary point of this story is to let us know that sometimes God seems distant and inactive when all the while he is still very much up to something totally life-changing and significant. When this guy loaned me the money to open my business, it was life-changing. It was something that was very significant. And every time I got a chance to thank him, I thanked him. And I, and I really told him, I'm not praising you, but I'm thanking you for being obedient to God. Life changing is significant. So the book of Esther, there's a lot going on in this book, but I'm going to try to summarize it um, so that it's not real long. So Israel was conquered by Persia as a consequence for the continual rebellion against God. So King Ahasuerus, so the characters in, in this book is King Ahasuerus, the main characters, Queen Vashti, Mordecai, Esther, and a guy named Haman. So in the beginning, um, king, uh, the king summoned um, Queen Vashti to come before his court. The, the, the scripture says that she was beautiful and the king wanted to show off um, her beauty. And in order to come to the king, in order to reach the king or to talk with the king, you had to come into his court first. And then if he received you, he would hold up his scepter. And when he held up his scepter, then you were received. So he summoned for, for Queen Vashti to come, but she refused to come. So the king got angry. He demoted her. So um, after he demoted her, he, um, he developed this process of, of electing a new queen. And all the beautiful women came into the uh, king's court, and Esther came along. Now, keep it, now, uh, now, now, this is the significant thing about it, is Esther was a Jew. The other women were a Persian, but Esther was a Jew. Mordecai was a Jew. Mordecai was Esther's um, cousin, but he was much older than her, and when Esther's um, mother and father died, Mordecai, Mordecai took her as, as a daughter. So all the beautiful women came in along with um, Esther. And um, the women had turns gone before the king, but for some reason, the king found favor with Esther. The Bible says she was a beautiful lady as well. So the king um, appointed Esther um, as, uh, as queen. So the king had these eunuchs, and two of the eunuchs had, 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 had developed a plot to kill the king, and Mordecai, he heard about it. So what Mordecai did, he went and told Esther about the plot um, to kill the king. And, and Esther went and told um, the king of, um, about um, the two units that were plotting to kill him. And she told the king that Mordecai told me. So then the king had, had those guys killed. So then the king, he appoints um, this man named Haman to be the next, um, next in rank to the king. And, and, and so Haman uh, had all authority to do whatever um, he wanted to 
as long as the king um, agreed. So what the king does, so, so Haman, he's out in the court. And Mordecai, every day he comes into the king's court, out the, um, outside of the king's court. This particular day, um, Mordecai was out there, and, and the king had decreed that every man that's, that, that, that came before Haman had to bow down. So, so when Mordecai came to Haman, he refused to bow down, and it, and it made Mordecai, it made Haman upset. So he got mad, and then next thing you know, uh, Haman um, plotted to kill all the Jews. So he went before the king and, the, and asked the king to sign a decree, allow him um, and his men to kill all the Jews, right? So chapter four, this is when Mordecai uh, hears about um, the decree. And he goes before the king's court with sackcloth on. So this is the this is the really the mention of, of God in this in this book right here, because when 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 someone had adorned sackcloth, it, it was it was a sign of a of, of mourning, of repenting. So so he went um, with the sackcloth. Esther found out what was going on, and. Again, if you go before the king, you have to go into the king's court first, and the king has to raise a scepter in order for you to come um, to, before him, right? The other way, he has to send for you. So Mordecai um, talked to Esther through a third party. Uh, told, uh, Mordecai told Esther, look, this is, your, this is your purpose. This is why you are the queen. You need to talk to the king to let the king know what uh, Haman has plotted to do. And, 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 and Esther was afraid at first because if the king did not receive her, she would die. But Mordecai insisted, you know, God, in other words, look, God placed you here for this purpose right now. God has worked behind the scenes and God knew that this was going to come and you have found favor with the king. So sure enough, she, she got the courage up. She went before the king. The king received her. And, and the king said, hey, I'll give you whatever you want. I'll give you half of my kingdom and anything else that you want. So she, she, she developed these, so, so she asked the king to allow uh, Haman to come into a feast. She did it two days, right? The second day, the night, of, of, the night before the second day of the feast, the king has a dream. And in his dream, he's reminded of a Mordecai, the man that, uh, that, that saved his life. So, the next, so, 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 so that night also, when Haman was at home, Haman was talking to his wife about Mordecai. He did not like Mordecai, and he wanted to kill Mordecai. So, so, so Haman's wife said, well, why don't you build this gallop, a big hanging thing, and, and in the morning before you go into the feast, he said, just hang him. But God intervened because that night, uh, 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 the king had a dream, right? So, so what happened is that that next morning, the king sent for Mordecai. And he said, he said, he said, what reward has this man gotten for, for saving my life? So he got nothing. So that's when Esther told the king about um, the plot that Haman had to kill Mordecai. So long story short, Mordecai ended up hanging on the gallop. So I say all that to say that God is always present and, and he's always active in the lives of, 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 of his people. And long story short, Mordecai ends up being a next in line behind the king. Here this man is a slave, he's in bondage. They, um, uh, Israel, they were in captivity under the Persian rule. But yet he became the second man in charge of all the king's affairs. So, 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 so when we look at life and we think that things are over, when we assess our situations and our circumstances and we have no other way to go, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Please do not be alarmed. And there are some points taken from, from this story, right? One is that God reveals himself to us as he sees fit. God constantly revealed himself to Mordecai and to Esther as he saw fit. He gave, he gave them exactly what they needed at that particular time. God uses all of us for his purpose. He used Haman to exalt Mordecai. He used Queen Esther to gain favor with the king. He used those two units to, um, to, to bring attention to Mordecai. 
God uses all of us for his purpose. And, I'm not, and, 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 and I would dare imply that God punishes those that he used to do what we would call bad things. I don't know. But my faith makes me believe that if God uses me for his purpose, then he has to protect me. He, he has to. I just can't see it any other way. So if he used me to cuss somebody out, <laughs> I like being extreme sometimes, but if he used me to cuss somebody out, then, and, and then they go around and they hear somebody else cussing and they may address that person, then maybe that was for the reason, for a purpose. I don't know, but he uses us for his reasons and for his purposes. Even when we think we understand what God is doing, we really don't. I'm out there washing my car and my daddy came riding by. And, um, <laughs> and I said to my daddy, my daddy drank and, and smoked and he had a bad heart. And he had a drink and was smoking his cigarettes. I said, daddy, that stuff gonna kill you, man. What you doing? But that wasn't the purpose. That was not the purpose that God used my daddy for. He allowed me to see my daddy one last time. So even when we think we understand what God is doing, I was a good Christian at that time. So daddy, you need to leave that stuff alone. I thought I understood what God was doing, but we really don't. God would definitely give us favor when it is needed. He would give us favor when it is needed. Thank God he gave the Democrats favor. He used, he used our buddy, he's our buddy now. And he's using our buddy to tear that other party up. <laughs> So when God seems distant from, from us, trust, persevere, and remain obedient to God. When God seems distant from us, trust, persevere, and remain obedient to God. Well, God, I'm hurting right now. So-and-so didn't have to do this to me. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get them. I know you say, I know the words say to turn the other cheek, but I know you'll forgive me as well, God. So I'm going to do this. But when God seems distance from us, trust, persevere, and remain obedient to God. Another lesson. Always be optimistic in any negative situation. Amen. All this comes from the story of, of, of Esther. Always be optimistic in any negative situation. God would never abandon us, nor will he ever disown us. God would never abandon us, nor will he ever disown us. Israel, were in captivity because of their disobedience to God. God allowed them to go into bondage, but yet he never disowned them, and he never abandoned them. So the conclusion, the book of Esther offers unique characteristics, causing it to stand out in the Bible. There are no references to God, nor are there any references to God's law or covenant or to prayer. Concepts like kindness, mercy, and forgiveness receive no attention. The whole book is written from a perspective that reveals the spiritual remoteness and inactivity that Israel felt from God. Likewise, if we engage God in a relationship long enough, we will at times experience feeling distant from him causing us to wonder if he is still active in our lives. Esther teaches that God is still present and active. However, he is choosing other ways to make us the people he ultimately wants us to be. So if you feel as if you are not in the right relationship with God, I want to challenge you to rethink your thinking. If you feel as if where you are right now today, whatever you might be dealing with is not of God, I want you to rethink that. If you believe that you have disobeyed God so much and have let God down to the point that God is angry with you, I want you to rethink that right now. Perhaps you are exactly where God wants you to be in order to get you to the place where God wants you to be. As I stated earlier, human action is the key to achieving God's purpose. 
in the world. Human action is the key to achieving God's purpose in the world. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all important. It is all important. It is all important to get us to the place where God wants us to be. And one last story in my closing, I had a barber and he was working as an apprentice and I felt sorry for him. From the time God blessed me with my shop, I wanted to be a blessing to somebody else. So I had a, a list of barbers that just took complete advantage of me. This particular barber, he being an apprentice, I was supposed to pay him an hourly wage and withhold payroll taxes. That hourly wage was at the time seven, I think seven seventy-five an hour. Anybody know anything about a barbershop, you robbing yourself if, if that's all you're gonna make um, in an hour's time. When you cut two, three, four hairs in an hour at, at, at that time, I think the haircuts were $15. Who, who would wanna work for $7 an hour when, when you can make that kind of money? So I told this guy, I say, look, I'll pay you a percentage, which was greater than 775, and the 775 um, 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 would have came out of the money that he made from his haircuts, and it also included the tips that would have been given to him. So I told him, I'll give you a percentage of what you make and you keep your tips. I said, the only thing you have to do is make sure you pay your taxes. The end of the year, he didn't pay his taxes. He ended up owing some money. So this joker called the state board on me first and said that I violated um, the rules. Then the second thing this dude did was took me to court and sued me. And I had to give him some money back. And I remember I came to, the, to here that, that morning after I left court, because I can be emotional also, and God had blessed, blessed me to have Deacon Taylor in the, in the building. And um, <laughs> yeah, I cried. And Deacon Taylor just wrapped me in his arm, you know. But I say that to say that all that stuff had to happen for me to be where I'm at today. I went from four barber stations to two barber stations. And one day I heard the voice of God say to me, he said, I bless you with this business, but you were trying to give it away. He's always revealing himself. He's always showing us something. The, the only way we can continue to see the revelation of God, we have to go through some things, good and bad. Let's count the good and the bad together. Let's rejoice over the good, let's rejoice over the bad. Why? Because we know that God is present and active in our lives and he is constantly working behind the scenes. The doors of the church are open. So yes, God, he is truly present and active in the lives of his entire creation. And today, if anyone that's listening to this message, or if, 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 if you are dealing with um, feeling distant from God, or you're struggling with whatever situation you're in, I encourage you to hold on. Trust in the Lord. Draw closer to the Lord. And if you know anybody who's dealing with some kind of issue or situation, I pray, I pray that God would touch all of our hearts to go and share with those people. Let us hold them. Let us, let us put our arms around them, our spiritual arms. Let us ensure them that they are okay. You are exactly where God wants you to be. It is a relationship building. It is a process of the revealing and the revealing and the revealing and the revealing of God. God's going to always, he's always revealing himself to us. God did not stop revealing himself to us when the last word was printed in this particular book. God did not die when Jesus went back to the cross. God is still alive and present in the lives of his people. He has never, ever, ever left us, and he would never, ever, ever forsake us. He would never leave us. He would never abandon us. He would never disown us. He would never turn his back on us. The love that God has for all of us is that God will fight to the end to hold on to us. It's up to us to hold on to God. Don't let anybody tell you uh, 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 you're worthy to come before God. 
Don't let anybody tell you that, 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 that God is not involved in your life. Don't let anybody tell you any of those things. God is present and he's active and he's working in the lives of all of his creation. Thank you. of the Lord in your life. 
And as the choir just sung, God, you're all we need. You're all I want. You're all that, 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 that we can ever want. And, we all, and they also, in the song, and the psalmist also said, help me to know that you want me. Amen. So be encouraged today. Choose not to think the way the world thinks when it comes to uh, coincidences, when it comes to mishaps, uh, when it comes to uh, 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 how we've uh, planned for this or planned for that. Choose to believe that, it's, it, it, it's, it's been, that it was God, that it is God that has been working behind the scenes on your behalf. Do as Esther did. Don't take the credit for yourself. She gave the credit to Mordecai because it was Mordecai. God worked through him. So give all credit to God. Amen? Amen. 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 And we know we need to do that because we know our benediction in this world who shall have trials and tribulations will be a good I have overcome the world. Amen. God bless you all. You go in peace. And we pray that you have a blessed week.